it's like you're listening but you're not hearing there's many a time for no reason I'll just sit there and cry I'll just sit there and weep of what could have been and she said I'll never forget your word you just said he's dead 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 In the last decade, over 750 people have died on Lincolnshire's roads. That's enough to fill two jumbo jets. Now this is the A158 in Lincolnshire. Now this road was responsible for the most fatal collisions of the last two years. And it's no wonder why, when you see a straight like that, into a bend like this, cars reducing from top speeds down to minimal speeds. It's no wonder this is one of the most dangerous roads in Lincolnshire and 2009 has already seen 11 deaths on Lincolnshire roads. That's compared to just eight this time last year. That's almost a 50% rise. So how does this compare to previous years? Well, in 2006, there were 66 deaths compared to 79 in 2007. Last year, the figure dropped to 51, but 13 of them came in December alone. That's the second highest recorded in a single month this decade. The police are one emergency service that deal with collisions through their response and patrol unit and they say that it can be any number of reasons into why these unnecessary deaths are happening. No, it can be a number of things. I think um, drink, careless driving, weather conditions. I've, I've only, well, I've been dealing with incidents for what, two years and I can't say that there's a trend, I think. A lot of it is down to driver error, I believe. For Joe Markin, mentions of road deaths are still painful. She lost her 23-year-old son Andrew 12 years ago. Yet she still remembers it as if it was yesterday. So we came home and uh, it gets off on the top road. And uh, he stopped and he looked and went to cross the road. When another taxi basically doing excessive speed, you know, uh, quite a lot more than what he should have been doing. Um, swerved into Andrew. Um, Andrew was a step off the pavement, a step away from safety, and uh, this driver hit him. Had he been driving in the speed limit, or even just a few miles over the speed limit, Andrew would have been walking down the avenue. From the restorative justice point of view, these guys uh, are now being required to uh, make amends for the wrong they've done. The reparation, the uh, sort of repair work they're doing, is uh, directly for the people who are on the receiving end of the offence. The young people who've committed offences are seen to be making an effort in trying to do something about what they've done, you know, showing some sort of remorse some sort of regret and uh, a desire to try and make things right. And at the same time, the people on the receiving end sometimes are able to see that the young people are not quite the monsters that, you know, are sometimes portrayed in the, in the media and, uh, and other places. Do you feel like you're giving something back to the community? Yeah, especially because we're doing it for him as well, which is better, because if you just do it for the community, then he's not, it's not really affecting him. When you say community, it does, but it doesn't as much as you would do it just for him. By racing on the farm on a motorbike, the two youths drove the animals into a nearby river. You work bloody hard day in, day out, caring for your livestock and uh, just for some needless sort of action to, uh, you know, drown 15 sheep needlessly is, is ridiculous. You know, they're young lads, they're going to make mistakes, they've, you know, they've been tearing about, they've got caught and they're paying the consequences. You know, what's done is done. I'm not going to bear a grudge or, you know, it, you know life's too short, so they're learning a the lesson. So uh, I think what they're doing for the next few hours is a benefit to everybody, really. Back in St Giles, offending youths have an even more unique way of giving something back to the community. Project Respect was set up by neighbourhood manager Noel Tobin 
who explained more on how these schemes have benefited such a deprived area. Have you seen a percentage uh, decrease in the amount of and social behaviour and jobs? Yeah, we certainly have. Um, there's been um, statistically a 40% reduction in um, overall antisocial behaviour on the estate and residents have fed back to us that you know things are a lot better. I think we've already made significant inroads in terms of some of the areas of deprivation on St Giles. Actually the future is, is pretty good. Um, the prospects for the estate in terms of all kinds of issues, for example on health, on uh, education, um, there's significant improvements already or the seeds of significant improvements and I think we can just build on that. a typical November week, scattered showers and frost will hit the city. High winds means it's going to be a cold one across the Lincolnshire coast and Lincoln has a flood warning due to the unusually high rainfall this week. If you're worried about any of these issues, call the number across the bottom of the screen. My advice is to wrap up warm and buy an umbrella. I'm Emma Parkin, that was the weather, back to the studio. This has been Yamarais and Dara for Lincoln TV News. Goodbye and thank you for watching.